Hi, and welcome to another edition of Holloway Help. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Scott Holloway, a physics teacher at Westlake High School in California. Today's edition of Holloway Help is conservation of momentum and conservation of energy, as shown by a ballistic pendulum, also known as an impact pendulum. I hope you enjoy it. Here we have the ballistic pendulum device, which is basically a spring launcher. Um, we pull back and cock the spring, load a metal ball bearing into the end. The ball bearing will be shot out into a plastic block, which will catch it, giving us an inelastic collision. We then measure the angle to which it rises, and from that we can calculate how much energy was passed. I have here a pendulum, which is basically a cord with a uh, weight or a bob on the end. And when we let it swing back and forth, what we have is conservation of energy demonstrated in one of its simpler forms. The energy that the ball has goes from at the high point being maximum potential energy due to gravity or u sub g, and at the low point, the bottom of the swing, being pure kinetic energy. So we transfer from potential energy to kinetic energies, kinetic energy as we go through the swing, back up to potential energy on the far side. And that's basically what's happening with our ballistic pendulum, only we start at the low point and the ball is struck. As the ball is struck, the kinetic energy carries up into potential energy at the high point, and then it swings back down. But what we care about is how high does it get? How much potential energy does it show it had stored in it? From that, we can backtrack and figure out how much kinetic energy it had at the bottom, which is what we plan to do right now. And here's what a launch looks like. As you can see, the ball is embedded in the block, and so the energy is transferred through conservation momentum. And we can take the ball out and launch it several times so we can get a good average of the appropriate height. Here are a couple sample launches where we can record the angle that the pendulum rises to. After several launches, we find the average angle is about 22 degrees. Well, we begin with the formula for conservation of momentum, which of course is momentum before a collision is equal to momentum after a collision. So we have a ball being launched with the initial velocity v naught, a little m for the ball. I use now oh, m some b for ball, m some b for block. We get confused. I use m one for the ball, and that's going to embed in m two, which is my block, which is much heavier, which is originally at rest. So when I use my before equation, momentum before is going to be m1 v0 plus m2 times 0 is it going to equal my momentum final. And this drops out, goes to 0, so we don't need to worry about that. m1 v0 equals afterwards, the final momentum is going to be after the block. It is has the ball embedded in it, so we have m1 plus m2 now as one object with a final velocity, we'll call that v2 here. So this final velocity v2, if we divide m1 plus m2 over this side, m1 over m1 plus m2 times our original velocity is equal to v2. And that's how we're going to get the transfer of the momentum from the first ball into the ball block system. Our general form for conservation of energy is written as follows. U sub i, or potential energy, plus kinetic energy initial, plus work due to non-conservative forces, is equal to the potential energy we have final, plus the kinetic energy we have final. 
Now in this case, we're not dealing with any springs, we're not dealing with any rotation per se. Um, we're going to look at the transfer of gravitational potential energy into kinetic energy. Um, what we're going to assume is that the ball starts at the bottom of the swing with just kinetic energy. So we're going to call the bottom of the swing, or if we draw the pendulum, this point right here is where it's all energy is kinetic. And as it swings up and achieves this position, all the energy now is potential due to gravity, U sub g. So we're going to start with 1 half mv squared, the kinetic energy it has at the bottom of the swing. We are ignoring air resistance, so there's going to be no work due to friction. And we're calling the low point of the swing um, our origin, so there's no gravitational uh, potential energy at that point. So this is going to zero, this is going to zero, so we only have kinetic energy. On the far side where it stops, kinetic energy goes to zero. So we only have potential energy, which will be m gh. So when we look at our pendulum, the ballistic pendulum, we see at the low point is where the ball initially embeds in the block. It's going to have all kinetic energy in the beginning. So we're going to have kinetic energy here. It's our low point. We're calling this uh, potential energy of zero. And it rises up to a point here. And this point here has potential energy due to gravity because it's higher up. It's been raised vertically. And so that's what we're looking for is that height there. When we go to find that height, we need to look at the vertical change. So we're going to look at, look at the change from this position to this position. So we're going to do a little trig. And here's the angle that my pendulum swept through. This is the hypotenuse, is the length of the pendulum. This whole side is also length L. So this little piece here is L cosine theta. But we want this little height here. This is our H we're looking for. So it's going to be the full length L minus L cosine theta. So H equals L minus L cosine theta. And that's going to be important because that's what's going to go in for H right there above. So we rewrite our equation. Um, notice that my M is the same on both sides, so I can get rid of that. I'm going to let M drop out. And so what I have here is 1 half V squared is equal to G times L minus L cosine theta. Bring the 2 over and take the square root. I have V equals square root of 2 G L times 1 minus cosine theta. I pulled the L outside to simplify it a little bit more. Now we have V equals square root of 2 G L 1 minus cosine theta. Now we have to remember what is this the velocity of? This is the velocity after the ball is embedded in the block and the two travel up together. So when we back up, it's still, this is the velocity of the block and the ball. So I'm going to put BB, the combined block and ball. So we're going to take this and go back before the collision. We're going to kind of undo momentum, um, if you will, or do the momentum problem backwards, have an explosion as opposed to a collision. So I'm going to get rid of some of my equations up top because I can't 